KN4 DDD. Kilo November 4 Delta Delta Delta. All right, Delta, Delta, Delta. Hang on just a minute. I'm trying to get set up on my <laughs> my uh, book work here. Okay, Delta, Delta, Delta. What's the uh, preamble to that call sign? Delta, Delta, Delta. What's the uh, preamble to that call sign? Hey, Roger. There's some two on Mary on the frequency, but uh, you got the call sign uh, right. The name is Dennis Location, Virginia Beach. Over to you, KT9, Victor Kilo, Victor. Mm -hmm. Roger Dennis, and uh, you're in uh, Virginia Beach. And what was the first part of that call sign? Give me your call sign again, slowly, phonetically. Call sign. Give me your call sign again, slowly, phonetically. Kilo November 4, Delta, Delta, Delta. Over. Kilo November 4, Delta, Delta, Delta. Roger, and you're in Virginia Beach. And uh, Dennis, what radio are you running today? Beach. And uh, Dennis, what radio are you running today? Um, 746 pro, uh, and somewhat QRP, about 40 watts into a uh, off-center set dipole. Over. Ah, uh, roger that, roger that. Well, uh, gosh, is, is that a, a newer radio or an older radio? Gosh, is, is that a, a newer radio or an older radio? I got it in uh, 2018 when I first got on the air. I got it second hand from the fellow down in Florida, and it's been working uh, pretty flawlessly. I don't have any complaints with its performance. In fact, my reason for calling this morning is a little bit out of the uh, norm for the uh, VLOC next. Uh, over. Uh, gosh, repeat the last. You got, uh, uh, I lost you there. Uh, try one more time on the last half of that. There. Uh, try one more time on the last half of that. Roger, I had an inquiry uh, for the VLOG net beyond the usual uh, compression and uh, equalization uh, things that you address. Over. Roger, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm getting some uh, uh, QRM myself. Uh, what, if you would, Dennis, why don't you give me about 10 or 15 seconds and uh, tell me about your antenna system, and I'll look around and see if I can find a better path. Roger? Look around and see if I can find a better path. Roger? Okay, Roger. About center uh, set, all uh, 30 feet at the center, and the... Uh, and trail off uh, one level flat top to the corner of my house and the other to a convenient tree out in the backyard. And uh, my shack is on the second floor, so I've got some uh, good uh, coax uh, running to the bell and they're up on top of the pole. Uh, let's see, uh, back to you, uh, KC9BYG from kn 4 D. Roger, Roger. Well, let's see if uh, if you do uh, know about the, that radio. Uh, can you advise me if you're in that uh, wide uh, transmit band width, uh, transmit band uh, TBW, transmit band width, uh, transmitter band width? Uh, uh, we recommend is 100 to 2900. Roger. It's 100 to 2900. Roger. I understand it's telling me it is in the uh, wide bandwidth, and uh, I try to keep it down to about uh, 2,700 uh, kilohertz, but it uh, may be a little bit uh, wider than that. Uh, what are you reading on the SDR? I'm looking at the NA5B SDR, but my signal is pretty light today. Over. Yes, sir. We recommend 100 to 2,900, and that gives you uh, the best performance that transmitter is going to get with just a slice of daylight before you enter somebody else's conversation. So uh, I suggest uh, getting that TBW on the 100 to 2,900 uh, uh, location, Roger. Uh, location, Roger. Roger, understood. I just reached down and modified it from wide to mid. I don't know what the parameters are without looking them up, but does that make any uh, difference? It looks a lot neater now uh, on the uh, SDR. Over. 
Yes, sir, but what happens when you go into those lesser modes? If you went from a wide to a, to the medium mode, uh, you just lost a lot of top-end audio, a lot of uh, treble uh, power that is so necessary for intelligibility. Uh, so I would run that in the highest uh, resolution possible in the 100 to 2900 wide mode, Roger. To 2900 wide mode, Roger. Roger, I just changed that back to the uh, wide mode. And another detail I failed to mention is that I am not running my transmitter directly. I am running it through the RC4 remote hands uh, client and server. And so we're subject to the limitations of whatever voice over internet uh, protocol will allow there. Uh, Roger. Oh, Roger. So, uh, but you can change your bandwidth remotely, Roger? Change your bandwidth remotely, Roger? Oh, uh, that's, that's correct. I, I can, uh, well, no, 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 no. I have to reach over to my uh, transmitter itself and change that manually. I cannot uh, control that remotely. I don't have it set up to allow that portion of the transmitter to be controlled remotely. Over. Yes, sir. I would, I would uh, leave it in that 100 to 2900 transmit band pass because uh, that is the best definition that that transmitter is going to be capable of. And, uh, you know, in a pile up or all that kind of stuff, uh, you need all of the intelligibility that you can. I mean, if you, if you just think about this thing, as far as uh, articulation is concerned, if uh, you were to, to, to project a, a downward uh, resolution in your transmitter. Just think about this for a minute. If you were to go to, uh, say, 2200, uh, 100 to 2200, 100 to 1500, 100 to 1K, you know, you're down there into some kind of uh, uh, CW uh, bandpass, you know. Uh, and so you need, as a human voice, you need all of the intelligibility you can for articulation. So that's why we suggest the 100 to 2900 uh, uh, wide transmit band uh, width, Roger. Wide transmit band uh, width, Roger. Absolutely, I agree 100% on that. Uh, you lose the articulation and you lose the differentiation of sibilance. You can't tell a Sierra from a Foxtrot if you cut things out at 2200. Over. Exactly, absolutely. Now, so we, in our normal tune-up uh, setup, uh, we go from uh, just the questionnaire about the uh, TBW to the uh, compressor limiter, uh, compressor uh, uh, processor, and uh, we usually suggest a three on that, uh, simply because, uh, uh, you know, three is the same thing as a six, uh, as far as actually working on the word, except uh, with a three, you don't have suck up uh, between the words. And uh, that suck up between the words doesn't do anybody any good. So we suggest uh, a three out of uh, 10 or 30 out of 100 on that uh, compressor processor uh, device. Uh, three out of 10 or 30 out of 100, depending on how it's labeled, Roger? 100, depending on how it's labeled, Roger. Roger, and thank you. I agree with that. I think mine was set at four on the uh, compression, so I'll back that down to a three. But if possible, I'd like to uh, go to another question I had about the fidelity or the reliability of the waterfall displays on SDRs to disclose accurately the presence of uh, whiskers due to uh, non-linearity and overdriving of an amplifier or a, uh, or a, a barefoot transmitter. Do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, I'm looking at your signal now here on the NA5B, and it is as clean as a whistle, as is our uh, friends over on 7292. But there are times when I've seen some uh, whiskers, and I wonder if that's an artifact due to the limitations of the SDR receiver, or if it that accurately disclose some nonlinearities on the uh, transmitting signal. Over. Uh, well, there are uh, nonlinearities on the uh, SDR receiver. Uh, most uh, SDR receivers roll out 
at about 200 cycles, uh, 250, 200 cycles, 250 cycles. They do not uh, go down to like 100 cycles, like say uh, my uh, 7300 here, uh, or, or uh, 7610, or, or you know any of the, uh, the, the the better radios. So uh, that's one anomaly that uh, I uh, have in mind when I'm checking around here. I always want to try to get back to my local antenna, which is a 7300 on a, on a dipole, uh, to uh, just uh, check out the, uh, uh, the, the overall uh, transmit uh, audio curve. I'm also looking at a, um, a, a um, audio um, meter as far as, uh, y you know, the fidelity, the, the uh, bandwidth there, and uh, so it helps me also. But, but when I get into a low-level situation, I get uh, more noise than I do uh, audio signal, and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really, really help. But uh, I w the next process from where we are is, uh, would be to go into your ALC. Uh, and uh, check to be sure you're running uh, two-thirds uh, at least uh, on your ALC meter. So we go to our ALC meter with mic gain in hand. And as we say the word audio, you become a human test generator and you adjust your mic gain until your uh, your uh, ALC meter is running seven or two thirds, whichever comes first, Roger. Or two thirds, whichever comes first, Roger. Uh, Roger, I understand that process. Let me just try it here. Audio. Audio. Yeah, the ALC is actually up around uh, 90%. So let me back off on my audio a little bit here. I'll try it again. Audio. Yes, that's uh, more like about 70%. Uh, over. Roger. Now, that's all subject to uh, the QRP battle. I mean, sometimes when push comes to shove, uh, my philosophy is is do what you need to do to get down the road. And uh, sometimes that audio level may come up a little bit, but uh, I always wanted to not go over, you know, that uh, uh, ALC uh, red line, but, but very close to it, Roger. Very close to it, Roger. Right, I understand. It's a pretty fine line there. Well, I'm talking about a situation where it's so high, where the audio level is so hot, that you run out of the ability of the ALC circuit to compensate for it, and you end up causing problems. Uh, I guess some people will call it splatter, where you see a portion of your signal falling both above and below the expected uh, 2.9 kilohertz bandwidth. Like for right now, if we, I, I were to see some whiskers on 71.89 that was in, uh, in sync with my signal, I would wonder if my uh, radio is not being uh, linear in the RF output. Uh, you see my uh, problem and uh, question? Over. Yes, sir. Well, usually the ALC will take care of that. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's. Uh, let's see how to put this. Um, the ALC is like a fast attack uh, release limiter. Uh, the automatic level control is a limiter that is uh, unlike the compressor processor. This thing is in the almost honest, almost instantaneous uh, attack for for uh, transient peaks and all kinds of stuff, and and it's designed that way to keep you out of trouble from from splattering. So most modern day radios have an exceptional ALC circuit as far as uh, being able to uh, attack those uh, uh, nuances that might cause problems, particularly in the upper range. Um, so that being said, though, I do uh, suggest that maybe uh, if you know where your uh, your equalizer is, uh, maybe uh, if uh, we tried a couple of uh, uh, clicks of uh, treble boost, uh, I think that would help your uh, articulation, Roger. That would help your uh, articulation, Roger. Yes.
Yes, Dennis, do you still have a coffee, sir? I caught part of that. I was looking around for a better uh, connection. Uh, you know, uh, propagation tends to uh, change uh, around, and when I'm, I'm monitoring right now uh, uh, five SDRs, so I have uh, the ability to move around the country as your signal uh, shifts around. And uh, you're running about uh, what? About 50 watts? Uh, you're running about uh, what? About 50 watts? Let me let me just check something real quick here. Check check P A S D R. Let me let me just check something real quick here. Check check P A S D R. Check check Kentucky S D R. Check check Kentucky S D R. There we go. Uh, uh, Dennis, are you copying me on an S D R? Oh, uh, Dennis, are you copying me on an S D R? Roger, I was just curious if you're copying me on an SDR. There seems to be a, a little latency in our conversation, and I was I was wondering if, if you were using an SDR. A conversation, and I was I was wondering if, if you were using an SDR. Roger, and there's a couple other SDRs. My uh, PA SDR uh, is uh, is really good, and the Kentucky uh, SDR is good up around uh, uh, Cincinnati. Uh, so they're they're pretty strong uh, on my uh, copy my signal, Roger. Pretty strong uh, on my uh, copy my signal, Roger. Roger, Roger. Let me check my uh, local antenna one more time. Come back and let me listen for you. Okay, here is KN4 DDD uh, uh, in Virginia Beach on uh, 7188. Uh, uh, Roger, Dennis. Uh, I couldn't do any better. I'm still on my uh, uh, Kentucky uh, SDR is doing a, a great job. Yeah, if you want to hear your audio, if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for KC9VKV followed by the word logbook, that will bring up uh, this recording. It'll be cut number one in the series of 3200. And I'll have it uploaded to YouTube by noon tomorrow, Roger. Have it uploaded to YouTube by noon tomorrow, Roger. Thank you. I'll uh, be happy to look for it, and uh, thank you for all your uh, work. It is uh, valuable uh, for the ham radio community. Roger, Roger. And just remember, um, as a, um, a QRP station, sometimes uh, you have to... Uh, to use that mic gain control, 
uh, on the uh, ALC a little bit more than what you would normally do because you are facing adverse um, conditions as far as a uh, uh, signal to noise ratio so uh, you might want to uh, to uh, need to uh, uh, add a little more um, uh, well let's see here dynamic range or a little less dynamic range usually uh, that uh, when you set up a mic like what we just did there with the ah uh, and uh, two-thirds that usually brings about a um, uh, um, an 80 to 85 percent of uh, uh, modulation index or 3 dB uh, dynamic range but uh, like I say as a QRP station yeah you might necessarily find yourself in a position of having to go to a 2 dB uh, dynamic range uh, uh, and push that uh, ALC just a little bit to to be heard Roger Roger just a little bit to to be heard Roger Roger Yeah, uh, working with uh, stability, so uh, try to get uh, the max without uh, without going up beyond the guard guardrail. Okay, uh, KN4 DDD. Yes, sir. Roger that. But just think about this as. Um Oh, gosh. Uh, if you were running uh, a power amplifier at 1,500 watts, you would really be, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, in difficult situations there. But as the power ratio goes down, the effective... Um, uh, interference level is reduced also. So I'm, but I'm not saying go over your ALC. Stay within in your max ALC uh, possibilities. But uh, you know, just uh, uh, and the other thing is that uh, what is a good practice is to to leave your ALC meter out as you're speaking to all of your friends and neighbors around the world and you don't have anything else to do so you're looking at this ALC meter as you're speaking and it's got that sweet spot at two-thirds and what you want to do is concentrate and it's kind of like a game of concentrating uh, on uh, trying to keep that meter on the ALC uh, meter in the uh, sweet spot as, as best you can as you're talking along and you can just uh, nudge your mic gain control up or down a little bit to uh, more or less uh, try to uh, to keep that meter in the uh, in the sweet spot along with you uh, doing you know your your talking part that's just another thought and you know we usually suggest maybe a couple of weeks at least of leaving your ALC meter out so you uh, develop a rapport with that uh, that meter and and you know uh, you know exactly what you're doing uh, you know because you can see it on the ALC meter right here uh, you know because you can see it on the AOC meter, right here. Yes, I hear what you're saying, and that's sort of like a professional training for a uh, radio announcer trying to keep the voice at a uh, more constant level and don't let the last syllable in the word and get swallowed. Roger, and it has to do with, um, uh, uh, in reality, it has to do with the uh, uh, voice tempo, how, the, how quick the delivery is, because if you talk like that, the meter is just bouncing. But if you're speaking along at a normal clip, uh, uh, then you can get a real good indication of where two-thirds are in that on that meter, Roger. Good indication of where two-thirds are in that on that meter, Roger. That's excellent thing, and I do appreciate that. I tend to speak a little bit too quickly, and then when I don't have something to say, I say, ah, <laughs> which is not the best technique either. Uh, over. Roger, Roger. Well, you know, in tempo, it's really strange uh, to think about the dialects and, and voice uh, cadences across the country. And there is a, uh, this thing from, uh, from north to south as far as the... Um, the uh, tempo of the delivery uh, it usually is uh, very quick up north and this, as it goes down south it slows down I don't know whether they're thinking about it more of what they're saying down south but there is a cadence uh, shift from uh, from north to south Roger cadence uh, 
shift from uh, from north to south, Roger. Yes, I've seen that too, and that's uh, that's very true. Well, I'm going to have to uh, leave this particular uh, band and uh, head over to some uh, uh, duties around the house. So uh, thank you very much uh, for your uh, time and attention here on the uh, v Log Net today, uh, KC9. on the TX button. <laughs> K and 4 DDD will be clear. Roger, roger, Dennis. Uh, good to talk with you, bud. Uh, and uh, like I said, if you want to hear that signal, uh, go to YouTube and do a call letter search, KC9VKV, followed by the uh, word logbook. will take you to this recording. I'll have it uploaded by noon tomorrow. Uh, 73, sir. And you have a great afternoon, beautiful weekend. And if you get a chance, uh, uh, join us next weekend. We'd love to have you. This is the Friday afternoon QSO VLOGNET. If you have a radio, you want to check out, give me a shout.